Good day, fellow investors. One of the most requested analysis, Micron stock analysis, a value investment, but a cyclical one. Why it is a value investment? Because many value investors like Lilu, Premwatsa, Seth Klarman, Monish Pabrai own it, and even Guy Spear owns it, Jeremy Grantham. So very, very fashionable among currently famous value investors. And many of you asked me, what do I think about Micron? Because especially Monish Pabrai discussed it consistently over the last months. So I decided, yes, it is a value investment, but it is cyclical in the semiconductor industry. And that's a great educational contribution also to our YouTube portfolio. We'll discuss in this video, at the end of the video, I'll buy it. Then we will see what kind of buy it is with the exposure in our educational portfolio. But we'll discuss why Pabrai owns it, what is the value investment thesis, the business sector, the cyclicality in it, make a valuation of what we can expect from the stock, of course, the investing risk and reward. Let's start with Pabrai and what he has to say about Micron. Any business I own, we don't care about the next quarter or even the next year. With Micron, basically, I think it's just destination analysis. Basically, the, what they think will happen in the industry is that the memory guys are making about 150 billion a year top line, all three of them together. And that 150 billion, they think, goes to about 300 billion in seven or eight years. And we don't know whether that'll happen, whether it's 50 billion or 350 billion or where, where that number is, but it's likely to be around 300 billion, maybe higher. And Micron might be 75, 85 billion or something thereabouts, maybe 100 billion of that number. And so then you just say, would they be banging out something like 20, 30 billion a year in cash flow? And yeah, I think they could. And, uh, and by then the market might recognize that it's not the old DRAM business anymore. But these guys, basically, even in downturns, they don't lose money. And uh, they still skim through. The cycles used to be very high and low. We've already seen the cycles are muted. So basically, my take is, okay, at some point, if the market believes that Micron can produce 20, 30 billion in cash flow, they will value it accordingly. So who cares about the rest? Thanks. I really appreciate it, Manish, that you share this with us. But here is the summary. You can pause this, read it. So free players, oligopoly. So he thinks that now that there are just free players down from 12 a decade ago, that there will be improved profits and improved margins, that the sector will likely grow to 300 billion or higher in 10 years. And that when Micron grows alongside the sector and makes 80, 90 billion, 75, it will bang out 20 to 30 billion in cash flows per year. That this isn't the old RAM industry. So the market might recognize that and value Micron accordingly. And he says that it is about destination analysis. Where will Micron be in the future? Just a warning here, Monish is a money manager. We'll discuss that a little bit more also towards the end of the video. So he needs to be invested. He needs to own something. He did well in the 2000s, but since he didn't do so well, and I think that his average performance as discussed in a recent book was about 1% above the market over the last 20 something years. So great period in the beginning and not so great for the last 10 years, but maybe he'll make up with Micron. Of course, the growth story is there, connectivity, artificial intelligence, vehicles and everything. And of course, if the sector can switch from a high competitive to a high margin and high cash flow sector, that would make a great difference. I spent my weekend analyzing this and reading a lot of analysis, sector reports and everything. So if you enjoyed this longer video, smash that like button, please. It really supports the channel and it motivates me to do more of these kinds deep dives. So let's start with Micron and this is from their investor presentations, but I think this is a great representation of the bullishness 
of the bullish thesis in the sector, especially what it was a year ago when the stock was double what it is now. Of course, more data, we use data, you're watching this now, it is using data, of course, which means more memory market growth ahead. And then also the more higher we go, the more memory we need. I think this is now seven gigabytes. I have one terabyte in my phone to store all these videos that I'm making now. It works much better. So. Of course, memory and storage is fueled by diverse and demand data, mobile, PC, industrial, auto, others, etc., etc. And they expect the revenue down the road to be 330 billion. Of course, as Monish said, it can be 250, it can be 350. Nobody knows, but they expect, or they at least expect that this is from a year ago. Keep in mind that the margins, the long-term margins, cross-cycle average gross margins will be closer to the 40% rather than the 20% that was in the past. But who knows, maybe this will be the next cycle and not this. That's very interesting and that's something we'll have to see over time. Of course, CapEx is going down over the last year so that should increase profitability but then again this was very interesting i did this analysis on purpose using the 2022 investor day i'll see in the next investor day as we follow it we'll see it uh, whether they'll update their very exuberant estimations we have seen that with intel also extremely exuberant estimations growth forever the next growth story but now Completely, the sentiment has and the market has changed, as you'll see in a moment. But then, yes, uh, Micron has market share in this new technology, a lot of leading positions. They expect to make less money from PC and more money from more advanced technologies, hopefully higher margins, but they expect their market to grow constantly and significantly new technologies, high bandwidth memory, CCXL innovation, so a market that doesn't yet exist, to be huge over time, gaining share in data centers, leading in mobile solutions, transitions in PC, and of course, as cars become smarter and smarter, that's also a growing market that they want to hit with their memory, and then, there is something that here we start with the inconsistencies. Their target was to have long-term agreements, percentage of micron revenues, 75%. That should keep gross margins stable. Unfortunately, that was a good plan, but this is the March 3, 2022 quarter. Revenues are half than what those were or this one. So you can see here that that is also something that didn't develop as planned because revenues dropped 50% in the last quarter. Also, why did revenues drop? Because still most customers remained on the spot market and you can see here a huge decline in NAND and boat DRAM that destroyed, of course, revenues and also profits. This was a great time to be a memory chip maker and now we see the cyclicality and this is a very bad time. As they describe the cycle in memory price cycles, prices tend to fall to cost and then to follow declining cost curve until the next shortage. So we have to see, okay, when will the next shortage come that Micron makes a lot of money and then it booms. Cost curves decline around 20% per year for DRAM and 30 for NAND. It would be fair to assume that bearing a sudden resurgence of demand, depending on inventory, NAND flash prices will decline 30% and then again 30%. We'll discuss the sector in a moment. Very important now for chip making. We have manufacturing in USA, Malaysia, Singapore, Japan, Taiwan, some in China, but it is globally diversified, which is important and can benefit also from 
chip making in other countries. And then getting close to the cost competitiveness top position, so they are doing good, but still their margins are in line with the markets, but their margins were much lower in the past. So let's dig deeper into the cyclicality of the sector. And yes, it is 100% cyclical. Even if the last two years, yes, this time is different, but as I always said, it's never different. So Q1 revenues down 49, 47% and an absolute destruction in margins from 48% to 23%. If you look at the chart, this happened for all the free producers there, simply destruction because as we have seen of falling prices. Market shares are pretty stable and have been pretty stable for the past there, growing, declining, they merge here with something and nothing to say there. But this, of course, happened already in 2014, 18. So it shouldn't be a surprise that there is this free and likely even a longer year cycle, short term cycles, longer term cycles, typical for the cyclical industries. And this was what the CEO said macroeconomic factors, supply chain constraints, broadening consumer inventory adjustments. So they slowed down and expect now a challenging market environment. However, if we just go back to what they expected a year ago, so here they were a little bit too exuberant, also went on with big investments, as we'll see later in CapEx. They will benefit from a mature Alpha One node. We expect healthy industry supply, demand balances and robust profitability for both DREM and NAND in the year. End of the year, they got completely destroyed. And you see here the high investments everyone was doing, and especially also Samsung, but Micron and the other competitor Inks, or however I pronounce that, went down but Samsung said I'm going to keep my investments because I want to gain market share some say it's to gain market share some say it's because they have no other option with their technologies because they are lagging behind only time will tell who is right about that but they want to backstab the dram cartel and invest a lot of money into the business build more this is full guidance capex so about 15 billion of that is for memories and you can pause here read a little bit more but they want to eliminate some other competitors and then likely in the sector go forward a key factor here samsung is old-fashioned be month and whatever but keep in mind they do have 89 billion of dollars in cash on their balance sheet to invest to push others out, to correct their mistakes if they make them, and also no debt. Micron has some debt, but this is from Ticker. If you want to check these nice graphs and longer term charts, you can click on the link in the description below. Also check all my other links and what I do in the description of the video. Something might give you value. Now, revenues were high and inventories were low, that's a positive margin for the sector. Everyone expects great, but that usually reverts and now revenues are low and a lot of the inventories is unsold, which shows that this is a typical cyclical sector. And as inventories are high, it might take longer for that cyclical downturn as the sector works the inventory out. If we look at margins, 61% in 2018, down to 30-ish in 2019, when the stock also bottomed, then again up to 48, we have discussed, and now down again when the stock again bottomed. If we look at the stock, when the margins are low, the stock bottoms, and then yes, if you can take up that cycle, and nail that, you can make a great return, 75% in a year or two. But you have to play it in a cyclical way. That will do at the end of the video. Now we are close to bottom again. 
and the market capitalization is 63 billion, which is important later for valuation. The PE ratio isn't 10 anymore because there will be no profitability in Q1 and down the road as they expect. When we go further discussing what the CEO said now after stability in margins, he said that the industry is experiencing the most severe imbalance between supply and demand in both RAM and NAND in the last 13 years. He also got caught there off guard. And as I said, Samsung keeps investing to gain market share. But if I look at this a little bit more accurately, then I see that, of course, this was pandemic induced, but PCs, which is a big part of Micron, are trending down. So more laptops and other things, mobile, etc. So they have to work there and maybe it will not rebound as fast, especially as this excess purchasing was happening during the pandemic. If we go to Samsung's guiding, they are a little bit more conservative than Micron and likely to maintain stance on inventory adjustments in the short term. Of course, fundamental demand for server based on investments in core infrastructure is there, should remain solid, possible, not we expect a recovery, possible, which is already big Wall Street and not Wall Street. We expect also in the second half of 2023 but need to keep checking that so that will also impact on when micron will hit its bottom or not and then when it comes to the business sector in conclusion we don't know whether it will turn around already or it will when the 2022 numbers come in i think next month from micron or it will turn around only in 2024 or 2025. That is high uncertainty, especially with Samsung investing. The long-term trend is, however, strong, and it's always better, as Buffett says, to invest in positive long-term structural tailwinds, but this is cyclical value investing and should be approached like that. So to do a stock valuation, we need to discuss how to value a cyclical stock, no Excel will help you there, and then see what will be the expected returns there from investing and from when you invest. As I said, cyclical stock, so expect the following. You have to buy when uh, things are really ugly, nobody makes money, everyone is cutting investing and the outlook is terrible. Now the outlook is still People expect that boom next year. And then again, it's good to buy close to book price of product close to cost where we are already now gross margins of 20%. And you can see here that when Micron was trading close to book, this is book value, close to book, close to book, and now not yet so close to book, but you can see that those were usually the times to buy in. Now, inventories are a little bit higher. When inventories in a cyclical environment are high, the downturn lasts longer. That's very important to look at. And then if we go to compare this with what Monish says, this is what it is now. We don't know whether this will be 300 billion or 200 billion, or one year it will be 200 billion, the other 300. So given the cyclicality, this can be one year after another year. We'll discuss this more a little bit because I don't think they'll be banging out 30 billion per year. Impossible given the natural law forces in the market. They are losing money now. So this is also wrong from the thesis. And then when the market recognizes that it will bang out 20, 30 billion per year, that might not happen. But still, we can make a valuation. To make 25 billion per year, 2030, they need to have a net profit margin of 25, 30%. Even in a good year, they make 100 billion in revenue. From now down the road, as the market grows, they need a 30% profit margin and free cash flow. If we look at the numbers here, in the best year, cheap shortage and everything, they made 10% of free cash flow. Of course, they invested, but they 
have been investing always. They always invest so much money. And you see Samsung saying, you need to invest more. So even in a good year, and at my best guess, I would take a 10% net margin as my best guess. Because free cash flow margins were zero. Often, this is zero. This line is zero. So negative, negative. Sometimes they go to 20%. But for this to be a constant, very unlikely. My best guess is for 10%. Over the cycle, cyclical averages of 10%, even if they make 100 billion, which is also a stretch, then we are at 10 billion in free cash flows. If they make 75 billion, that's 7.5 billion in free cash flows. That really changes the valuation down the road because, okay, if they make 10 billion, by 2030, P ratio of 12, because the market will always think it is cyclical because it is, that's a 10% return per year. If it happens by 2023, the market cap doubles, that's just 7%. So in my opinion, it's not a great buy, it's a good one. And something very important to understand is when these value investors bought this Lilu, if you check when he bought his Micron, 2020, okay, at current levels, then watched it go up and didn't sell. So he is practically even there. If we go back and look at Seth Klarman, when he bought, so pretty higher purchases, then sold everything, the lower purchase, but still close to current levels, then sold, then bought a little bit, more so they all actively manage there except for Li Lu. Let's see what Monish did. So he bought mostly at much much lower prices. This is the big purchase there and then purchased a little bit more and now a little bit more but the big shares were bought at much lower prices in 2019 and now he's holding to see whether that bullish thesis will develop or not. But Keep in mind their cost base is usually close to book value. So they all own it, but you don't have to own it. They are money managers. They must be invested because you give them money to invest, not to do nothing with it. And that's one of the constraints of being a money manager. So from a buying perspective, it's not the great buy. It's a good one now, 7 to 10% returns likely ahead. But if the downturn continues, it might become a great buy buy because the structural positive trend tailwind is there. So we will add it to our educational portfolio as cyclical value investing, which is very important. And the best time to buy more is when it comes close to tangible book value. So this won't grow, likely go a little bit lower. So around 40 bucks per share from the current closer to 60. And 40 to 120 is much better than 60 to 120. So that's better investing, lower risk and higher reward. That's real value investing. And we'll touch on that a little bit later too. So this is our portfolio here. And we have various exposures depending on the profits and losses. We did well with WPD buying higher and lower we did well with facebook as discussed yesterday in warren buffett's video about the market's irrationalities we did well there also we realized some there already on china also irrational some other interesting opportunities but how would i categorize this this is a buy and then let's watch it so here in line with 20 30 000, so i can buy twenty thousand to watch 50,000 would be a full position and then we can go to 100,000 if it's really a bargain like we did with China four or five months ago. I would categorize it now as a good buy. I buy 20,000 of Micron and then we go and see if it goes lower, then we search, we buy more and the uh, cyclically play the trend and wait for it to boom and then unlike Monish I will have to sell and please remind me to 
sell. So 100, so I can buy 340, uh, 345, 20,000, submit. Let's see if the order, order partially failed, it will order fail. So now we have it in our portfolio and uh, please, when it goes and if it goes lower, so if this 20,000 becomes already $2 lower, cyclical as I said, sorry for the joke, when this becomes 15,000, let me buy more and then when it drops another 20%, let me make the first purchase. That's how you buy cyclicals if you must buy them. You can also wait for the second purchase. That should be a better buy. And here I want to discuss this cyclical investment versus value investing, hold forever, and these two sentences that Monish Pabrai said. Any business I own, we don't care about the next quarter <coughs> or even the next year. So basically my take is, okay, at some point, if the market believes that Nikon can produce 20, 30 billion in cash flow, they will value it accordingly. So who cares about the rest? So we don't care about next quarter and next year. I think that's a big error. You have to watch that quarter next years for the best buy. Because if you don't care, you will do what Monish did over the last 10 years, which is average market, below market performance. But if you care, if you can find that value investing risk and reward, and then even care when you buy, of course, he cannot sell because if then he sells and then it goes up, then he's considered stupid or something like that. But the more I look at stocks, depending on what you target when you invest, you care about what can happen because that is risk. You care about what can happen in the next quarter next year. If you say, I don't care, I don't care about seeing my position going down 50% as it did in the last year, I think that's a disservice to shareholders. And lo and behold, I thought the same few years ago because I thought we are investors that romanticism that Buffett is discussing. But if you look at what Buffett's doing, he's selling stocks, most of them. He cares a lot about anything. And then you go to another, if the market likes it, it will give you a multiple. So your upside depends on how the market will think about it. That's again, not value investing. So these two sentences are extremely risky. And uh, in the exuberant world that we were living in the last years, growth and this and this, maybe we as value investors, I'm not <laughs> excluding myself, Monish uh, and everyone, might have lost that value investing sharpness that is necessary to do great, great value investing. So I'm working on that. It is a process like it is investing, like following Micron. And if you enjoy that value investing, tough process, subscribe, check what I do, and I'll see you in the next video.